Cameo Magic presents whiteboard explanations. In this video we will explain SysMLV2 by running through key elements and objectives of the language and comparing it to SysMLV1. There will be many examples shown to show the new language features and capabilities. The first key element to SysMLV2 is the new metamodel which uses kernel modeling language. This new metamodel preserves most of the UML modeling capabilities. KerML has a focus on systems modeling and is grounded in formal semantics. The second element to SysMLV2 is its robust visualization capabilities. This includes updated graphical and tabular views and a new textual view. The textual view has the look and feel of a scripting language. Next, the standard SysMLV2 API will serve as a programming interface for developers to interact with SysMLV2 models using create, read, update, and delete operations. This should solve many problems with importing and exporting models, interacting with models, accessing models, and problems with portability and data integrity. The goal of SysMLV2 is to increase adoption and effectiveness of MBSE by making enhancements to SysMLV1. This includes improved precision and expressiveness of the language, upgraded consistency and integration among language concepts, augmented interoperability with other engineering models and tools, modernized usability by model developers and consumers, enriched extensibility to support domain-specific applications, and a migration path for SysMLV1 practitioners. To review, SysMLV1 has nine diagrams and four pillars. The SysMLV1 diagrams will map to the SysMLV2 views. The SysMLV1 pillars will map to the SysMLV2 capabilities. Let's look at the mapping between SysMLV1 diagrams on the left to SysMLV2 standard views on the right in more detail. Pause the video as you need to review the SysMLV2 views and their corresponding SysMLV1 diagrams. Now let's look at the mapping between SysMLV1 pillars on the left to SysMLV2 capabilities on the right. We notice that SysMLV2 has several new capabilities. SysMLV2 has a textual notation. We will show four examples. Here's the first example of a part with an action and attribute. Note, Jupyter Notebook is currently an ideal method to view the scripting notation. Here is the second textual notation example which shows the behavioral flow. Pause the video if needed to review. This third example provides code for a simple state machine. sysmlv 2 scripting capability will vastly increase productivity and automation. And the last example includes use cases, several actors, and several relationships. Now let's compare some terminology updates between SysMLV1 and SysMLV2 regarding elements of definition and elements of usage. SysMLV2 makes an effort to simplify the terminology by using the term def, which is short for definition. The advantages to these updates include enabling effective reuse, facilitating learning and using the language, and enabling automation. Let's remember SysMLV1 decomposes structure on a block definition diagram while SysMLV2 decomposes structure on a general view. While block definition diagrams in SysMLV1 only allow for elements of definition to be shown, general views in SysMLV2 allow for both elements of definition and elements of usage to be shown. This additional feature allows for front tire and rear tire pressure attribute values to be added easily. The block definition diagram requires additional front tire and rear tire blocks to be created to redefine these pressure values. SysMLV2 is a more concise and straightforward method of decomposition. SysMLV2 offers new notation for subsetting, definition, reference subsetting, and redefinition. Review the notation below and an example will be provided. In the example, the part vehicle 1, which is an element of usage, is defined by the part def vehicle which is an element of definition. Front wheels and rear wheels parts subset the wheels part. The lug nut parts torque attribute is redefined from an undefined value to the value of 20 for the front wheels lug nuts and 30 for the rear wheels lug nuts. The sysmlv2 requirement element has an identifier, a shall statement, attributes, and constraints. The attributes and the constraints are new to SysMLV2 and allows modelers to quantify requirements easier. SysMLV2 introduces several new features regarding instances. An individual occurrence represents a specific serial number of a system during its lifetime. The snapshot occurrence represents a moment in time during the owning system's life. Time slices represent a time range in the owning system's life. 
Sys MLV1 does not have the ability to connect instances together in this manner. To review, Sys MLV2 is more straightforward and easy to learn, more precise in both scripting syntax and language terminology, more interoperable due to the standardized API, more expressive, and more extensible than its predecessor. Tool vendors are currently working to incorporate the Sys MLV2 new language improvements. At this time, we estimate Sys MLV2 to be commercially available for beta releases late 2024. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out our other educational content, like, and subscribe.